Hey everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central, and we are coming to you today with a Lightboard Lesson video. And in this week's edition of Lightboard Lesson, we're going to talk about elliptic curve cryptography. So I'm just going to write ECC up here, stands for elliptic curve cryptography. And so a lot of people are, you know, talking about elliptic curve cryptography. What is it? How does it work? Should I implement it? Should I not? Whatever. And uh, so we wanted to take a couple minutes today to talk about this thing. Elliptic curve cryptography has actually been around since like the mid 1980s. So it's been around for a while, but it hasn't really been implemented or used extensively at least until just recently. And so uh, anyway, it's, it's a public key crypto system um, type of cryptography whereby in, and in public key crypto systems, you have a private key and a public key and the private key, you can encrypt data with the, with the private key or the public key actually, and then you decrypt with the other one. And so, so there's this notion of public and private keys. And elliptic curve cryptography is one of those. And so when we talk about public key cryptography, I want to write this up here. We talk about the notion of a trapdoor function. And this is the math function that kind of underpins the public key crypto systems. And in a trapdoor function, kind of the basics behind it is that you can take a given value, I'll call it A, and use the trapdoor function to get to another value, and I'll call it B. And, and one way, going one way, you can do that very, very easily. But then if you start with the other uh, value, say you start with B, and then you want to get back to A, then it's very, very difficult to do that. So I'll put an X over that. I'll put a little check mark by that guy. All right, so again, trapdoor function, it's very easy to go one direction. It's very difficult to go the other direction. And so using that, and, in, and, and using that in the, in the sense of a public key crypto system, you need some sort of a uh, mathematical function, mathematical you know, foundation, whereby you have a good trapdoor function to use for that public key crypto system. Uh, one that's used extensively today is RSA, and it's, and it's uh, based on prime number factorization, where you take two random prime numbers, you multiply them together, you get this really big prime number, and then uh, the issue is multiplying those together is very easy, which that's kind of that A to B uh, level. But then to factor those out, coming back from B to A is very difficult. That's why uh, that's the that's kind of the really basic fun fundamentals of RSA and why it works so well today. Um, one one quick thing that I'll put on elliptic curve and RSA, I'll put ECC versus RSA right here. And so with a, with a key size in, in elliptic curve cryptography, if I were going to put, uh, let's say we talk about a 256-bit key size in elliptic curve cryptography, um, in order to achieve that same level of security using an RSA key size, you would need a 3,072-bit key. And so you can start to see that this is one of the, one of the reasons that elliptic curve is, uh, is, is so much you know, in demand today based on uh, you know, its comparison to RSA. The key sizes are much, much smaller, uh, but you get the same level of security. Uh, if we bump this up to 384 bits in ECC, you'd have to go all the way up to 7680 in RSA. So you can see that as ECC you know, keeps this small number of bits, RSA has got to get like huge in order to achieve the same level of security. This right here, I'll put, uh, I'll put a little TS by that, uh, 384. Uh, the reason I put that is that's uh, top secret level information in the U.S. government. Um, NSA and the other government agencies have said that elliptic curve 384-bit keys um, are strong enough to protect top secret level um, information. And so that's a, uh, you know, there's no way you would get that same level of protection with an RSA key at 384 bits. It's just not gonna happen. So anyway, all right, so that's kind of ECC versus RSA. But again, what is ECC? Kind of how does it work? Um, you know, what, what's, the, what's the magic behind the curtain as it were? So what I'm gonna do is uh, take you through kind of a bit of an example of uh, elliptic curve cryptography. And I'm gonna draw a math graph here, kind of a math function where this is the X axis and this is the Y axis. Alrighty, so you have this, this is your normal, you know, you remember back to algebra or whatever and you're doing your math functions. And so we're going to draw an elliptic curve on this graph. And the elliptic curve has a few interesting characteristics and I'm going to do my best to draw an awesome one right here. So we're going to come like this and that. That's not too bad. Okay, a few things 
that, uh, that elliptic curve has is that it is symmetric about the x-axis. So here's the x-axis that looks the same on top and it's like a mirror image on top and bottom. Symmetric about the x-axis. The other thing is that if you draw a straight line through this curve, it will intersect the curve in no more than three points. And so if I were to take a point right here, A, and I were gonna draw a line through it, it would hit it in another couple of points. And so let me just go ahead and do that. So if I were to draw this line, let's say like that, then it's gonna intersect it right here. Let's call that point B. And then you guessed it, that point is gonna be C. Alrighty, so in elliptic curve cryptography, what happens is you have a curve that's defined by a math function, and then you have a starting point A, so I'll put A, and then you have this, note, or this, uh, this idea of what, what's called a dot function, so I'll put dot, the dot function right there. Okay, so A dot something is gonna yield a, a certain value. So if you dot A with itself, let's say I dotted A with itself and it yielded this, uh, you, you have, essentially you draw the straight line through the curve and it's going to intersect in these two points. So if I said A dot B, then that would yield C, let's say. So if I said A dot B, then it yields C. And then what you can do is if you want to do that dot notation again, then you can drop the value from C because of the symmetric property of this curve about the x-axis. You can drop it down to this, so it's the opposite value on the x-axis from C. And then you can draw A over to that point like that. And so let's, let's say that this is, a, this is a value D, and then you notice that it intersected again right here, and we'll call that value E. And then what you can do at that point, you can dot it again, and uh, it's not a very good E. Okay, there's E. So you can dot it again, and you can bring that up, and now it's gonna intersect it right there. Then you can do, you can start back at A, you can go through that point, and then this thing just keeps going over and over, and you can dot it a certain number of times, and I'll say, I'll say that we'll dot it n number of times. So A dot B, or A dot itself actually, uh, n number of times is going to yield, let's say a value, I'll call it Z. Alrighty, another thing that I wanna point out is that you have the concept of what we'll call a max value out here, and a max value on the x-axis, so I'll just put this max line out here. And if you can imagine, as you do this dot function or this dot notation over and over and over, some of these values that, that fall on, these, uh, on the curve may go like way out here on the x-axis, like way out, you know, crazy huge numbers. And so the idea is you can set a max, and if, you, and if the value falls beyond the max as you're doing this dot notation, then you essentially take the value that would go beyond the max, you bring it back to the beginning, and you come over that far. And so the, the bottom line is you keep everything inside the max value. And so the max value, when you start talking about private and public keys in, uh, in this public key crypto system, the max value is actually the key size. So I'm gonna say key size equals max, okay? So essentially what that does is it says, you know, as you, as you increase the key size in an, in an elliptic curve uh, crypto system, you have increased the amount of space that you're able to work with now on this curve, and you've increased the amount of values that would be able to be used as points on this curve. So again, as the max goes out, then now you've got more points to work with. It becomes more difficult to, uh, you know, to undo this thing and to try to crack this whole thing. Uh, but of course, as max goes out, you've got, a, you've got more, more numbers to work with, so you've got to crunch through all those numbers as well. So there's a give and take. All right, the other thing I was gonna mention is the private key, so I'll put private over here. The private key in an, an elliptic curve crypto system is actually this n, which is the number, and I'll put dot right here. It's the number of times that you dot this thing with itself. So to kinda, to kinda recap a little bit, public or elliptic curve crypto system, you have, a, you have a function that's defined, or you have a curve, I'm sorry, that's defined by a math function. You have a starting point A, you have an ending point Z, and then you're gonna dot this thing with itself a secret number of times, so an N number of times. And as it turns out, it's kind of, it's kind of interesting uh, because if, if you are given the actual curve itself, the function that defines this curve, and if you're given the starting point as well as the end point on the curve, the Z point, as it turns out, it's extremely difficult to find out this number for n, the, the actual number of times that you dotted the function with itself to get to that point. 
And so that, that provides the basis for this trapdoor function to be able to say, hey, I can give you out public, you know, public information to everybody, the starting point, the, the actual function that defines the graph or the curve, but I'm gonna keep some stuff private and that is this n number of times that this function is dotted with itself. Um, okay, so that's, so that's kind of the, the basics behind it. Um, of course, elliptic curve cryptography can get extremely complicated. Um, there are, of course, more details to it than all of that, but this gives you kind of a, uh, kind of an, a basic understanding of what's going on sort of behind the curtain of elliptic key uh, or elliptic curve cryptography. And so, uh, so anyway, as far as the big IP goes really quick, we support, going back to that RSA versus elliptic curve, um, you know, bit, you know, key size, uh, the, the big IP supports both 256 and 384 uh, size keys. So get out there, configure your big IP, offer up that elliptic curve cryptography to those clients. I'm sure they'll appreciate it because they got a lot less to deal with in terms of crypto, uh, you know, functions that they have to compute and all that. So, uh, so thanks for tuning in today. Hopefully you've learned a couple things about elliptic curve cryptography, and we'll see you guys out there in the community.